Hello everyone, uh, we're starting chapter 3 today. April 1867 The seasons changed and spring came. Kyoto was filled with the cherry blossoms and the whole city took on a festive atmosphere. Surrounded by the gentle cheer of spring, my footsteps felt somehow lighter. Okita watched me prance about with a crooked smile. You don't need to hurry, he said. We aren't going anywhere in particular. Uh, just think of it as a nice relaxing walk. Okay, I'll be careful. It seemed to me that it was dangerous for a captain of the Shinsengumi to think that when he was out on patrol, but I didn't dare say anything to Okita. Then again, things had been pretty quiet lately. Perhaps he was right. No, I told myself, I had to focus. Now was not the time or the place for high spirits. Nearby, I noticed a few ronin who slunk off into the side streets at the first glimpse of the Shinsengumi. How suspicious! Why run away unless they knew they were guilty of something? I stared after them intently and must have looked as if I was about to give chase because Okita gave a bark of laughter. Don't waste your energy on them. Uh, they're small potatoes. Really? If they were Chashu guys, then they wouldn't just run off like that. Uh, they'd be more confident. Uh, the guys who take off like that when we show up are almost always small-time punks. I see. I didn't. Uh, they're probably guilty of something, maybe some minor crime, but the blues scare off a lot of people these days. Uh, the uniform's gotten pretty famous around Kyoto, hasn't it? Well, could be infamous, depending on who you ask. It was true, the Shinsengumi blues brought recognition, but that was a double-edged sword. Sometimes they commanded obedience or respect, but sometimes the response was less pleasant. Their uniform had become a symbol, but there was some argument among the Shinsengumi as to whether or not they should adopt a new uniform. Some people, such as Ito, just felt that the uniform should be changed because it wasn't fashionable. Is Ito back from the Imperial Territories yet? Yeah, I think so, said Okita. Can't say I'd have minded if he'd just stayed out there, though. He went to go recruit some of his friends and acquaintances, right? That's what he says, but I gotta wonder how far he really went, you know? How far? What do you mean? If he went out past the Imperial Territories, then he must really care about the Shinsengumi, right? After all, to go that far would be quite a trip to make, just to get more recruits. Okita, however, didn't seem to think so. That's what you think? Am I wrong? No, not really. Okita stopped and gazed off into space for a moment. When he spoke, it was to himself. A condo's too nice. He should just kill Ito. Okita! He had a tendency to talk of killing too easily and too lightly, but... How could you joke about killing one of your companions? He let his eyes slide to mine and gave me a small sigh. A companion, huh? The scorn in his voice wasn't for me, it was for Ito. 
Ever since he had first arrived, Okita and the rest of the captains had never seemed to like Ito much, but I was surprised that he would say something like that where anyone could have heard. I glanced around to make sure no one had been paying attention. What? There in the crowd, a face I'd seen before. Kaoru? The face that looked back could easily have been mine. There was no way I could have ever mistaken that face. But no sooner had I spotted her than she disappeared, melting into the crowd. Kaoru! Hey, said Okita. He made a grab for my arm, but I'd already moved out of his reach. I might get in trouble for it, but if I didn't go quickly, I'd lose her. Uh, sorry, Okita, there's something I have to do. I caught a glimpse of his confused face as I ducked into the crowd. How many times do I have to tell her not to run off without permission, grumbled Okita. Why can't she look at this from my point of view? Ooh. I ran through the crowd as fast as I could, bobbing and weaving around citizens going about their business, until at last I caught up to her. She was Kaoru, no mistake. Um, Kaoru, do you remember me? Uh, yes, you were with the Shinsengumi. I remember you. She looked surprised. You ran after me so suddenly. It scared me. I'm sorry about that, but there's something I wanted to ask you, I said. I realized belatedly that I didn't know what I planned to do with her answer once I had it, but I knew I had to ask. One of the Shinsengumi saw a girl who looked like me at the Sanju Ohashi Bridge a while ago. Could that have been you? I don't know. I do go by Sanju or Hashi fairly often, said Kaoru. Is that a problem? She laughed politely. Oh. Uh, did you want to ask if I'd even been there at night? said Kaoru. Could it be? Could Kaoru really have been the girl who interrupted the Shinsengumi that night? If it was an autumn night, and you got in the Shinsengumi's way... Then you and I are going to need to have a little talk, said Okita. I don't want to give away all the details, but it ends with your death. Oh, Okita! I hadn't realized he caught up with me so quickly. Oh, you're Okita from the Shinsengumi, said Kaoru. Uh, thank you for helping me the other day. She bowed, but Okita didn't even seem to notice. Uh, so, you gonna answer the question? asked Okita. Were you there that night? Okita wore the same half-smile he always did, but his body was as tight as a bowstring, ready to have his blade in hand at a moment's notice. My death? said Kaoru. Uh, please, don't say scary things like that. Uh, lots of people pass by Sanju or Hashi during the day. At night, though, I don't go near it because of the notice board stuff. It was almost as if she'd read my mind. I can't believe you suspect me just because my face happens to look like someone else's, said Kaoru. I don't know anything. Oh, of course, I understand, I said. She looked so sad, I felt I had to say something. I knew it wasn't you. After all, how could a normal girl do anything to the men of the Shinsengumi? 
Okita seemed less convinced. His eyes shifted to me. And why do you say that? Because she's a girl? Or because she looks like you? Uh, no, that's, that's not it. I couldn't bring myself to admit that he was exactly right. I'd assumed Kaoru couldn't possibly have done it simply because she was a girl. Uh, can I go now? asked Kaoru. Excuse me. Kaoru! She turned and ducked away, disappearing back into the crowd. Had I done the right thing, I wondered, in covering for her? I was pondering whether or not I should give chase again when I heard Okita begin to cough. <coughs> Okita, are you okay? He was bent nearly double and coughing uncontrollably, his entire body shaking with each cough. Okita! St stay back. As I stepped toward him, he threw out a hand and twisted his face upward to glare at me. What? <coughs> I'm <coughs> fine, so just stay there, okay? <coughs> it was the sheer force of his personality that stopped me, not just his words. <coughs> After a while, his coughing slowed, then subsided entirely. Okita, is something wrong? Uh, like what? When he turned to look at me this time, his sardonic half-smile was back. He looked every part the usual Okita, except that he had grown frighteningly pale. I mean, uh, why don't we find somewhere to rest? You looked like you were in a lot of pain. Oh, I was just tired. I mean, you did make me run all the way here. But... No but I'm fine. Now. His expression was suddenly hard. About the girl. Asking her about the thing with the notice board was important. I agree with you. Good then. We needed to know if she was an enemy of the Shinsengumi or not. I needed to know. But even uh, no, because of how important that is, you shouldn't have run off on your own like that. What if she had been an enemy of ours? Could you have handled her? Uh, well, did you even consider that possibility? That she'd plan to lure you here? It's a great spot for an ambush, you know. Uh, you're right. She hadn't tried to attack me, but Okita was right. Next time I might not be so lucky. I could have easily run right into a trap. You need to be more careful, all right? I can take care of you, but without me around, you're just a useless kid. Sorry. The Shinsengumi had done so much for me, I just wanted to give something back. Instead, I'd only caused more trouble for them. Yeah. All right, lecture's over, said Okita. Okita looked tired and more than a little frustrated. I tried to apologize again, but he cut me off. Uh, stop being so timid. You can rely on us when you need to. I've gotten pretty used to saving your ass at this point. A couple more times isn't going to mean much. He let out a snort of laughter. That night, after everyone else had gone to bed, I lay awake thinking about what had happened. I couldn't forget what Okita had said. A useless kid. He was right. Compared to the captains, no, even compared to the weakest Shinsengumi foot soldier, I was pathetic. There was nothing I could do for them. It wasn't as if I tried to imagine myself as some sort of warrior, but to have my lack of worth so bluntly stated was something of a blow. <sighs> I lay there staring at the ceiling. I couldn't go on like this. 
Tomorrow I start working harder. I didn't want to run off on more pointless adventures that did nothing more than cause trouble. That meant I needed to develop better judgment. And if I'm going to do that, I need my sleep. But no sooner had I closed my eyes... What? There was a crash from the hallway outside of my room. I rolled up and out of my bed just as the door exploded into my room. Standing in the hole was one of the Shinsengumi's soldiers. Um, is something wrong? It was dark inside and out and I couldn't see his face. He just stood there. I felt a chill run up my spine. Did you need something? Blood. I need blood, said the soldier. <gasps> he was one of the Furies. Hey, give me blood. I could see now that his face was twisted in madness and his eyes shone like twin fires in the night. His hair glistened white in the moonlight. He was a member of the Fury Corps, and he was utterly and completely mad. Oh, ah! I had to call for help. I couldn't possibly face a deranged superhuman monster on my own. No, I couldn't call for help. If I did, then the secret of the Furies would get out. That would be bad for the Shinsengumi. I had to find another way. The Fury, unfortunately, was not similarly encumbered by doubts. Ah! Oh! Gra! His sword hissed through the air, and I felt the metal of its blade burn into the flesh of my arm. Gra! Blood sprang from the cut. I pressed down on it desperately with my free hand, but to no avail. Thick, red liquid spilled between my fingers, fled down my arm and onto the floor. Yes, blood. Give me blood. He began to creep toward me, his movements odd and jerky like a massive spider. I backed away from him until I felt my back hit the wall. I was going to die. Suddenly, I remembered Okita's words from earlier that day. Stop being so timid. You can rely on us when you need to. That was it then. My death wasn't worth their secret. Someone help! Eh, <laughs> blood, blood. He was down on his hands and knees, licking my spilt blood off the floor. There was no samurai there. There wasn't even a person in him anymore. The blood on the floor had distracted him, but I knew that would only last precious seconds. If help didn't arrive soon, the seconds went by like hours. Please, I beg to any god who might be listening, let someone come. Not enough, not enough. He looked up from the floor. My sleeve was soaked in blood from the cut on my arm. His eyes locked onto it and I saw them light up with animal hunger. His grin was a nightmarish thing. Eh, hey, yes, dad, give me more of your blood. No! There was no doubt he was going to kill me. I froze. Hey, you alive? Yes! Hijikata had appeared in the doorway, his sword already drawn and shining in the moonlight. Gra! The fury spun to attack Hijikata, but the commander's sword was faster. Ah! His twisty cry reverberated from the walls of the room, but he still stood, despite the wound Hijikata had given him, sword in hand. Get over here, now, said Hijikata. Yes! As I ran to his side, I heard other footsteps pounding down the hallway, and in mere moments they resolved into the figures of the other captains. 
Shit, this is bad, said Nagakura. I don't think he can even understand us. Yeah, he's too far gone. We can't let him live, said Harada. At some unspoken signal, a chorus of blades slid from their scabbards. Shin! Sano! Don't screw this up! shouted Todo. Who the hell do you think we are, Heisuke? said Harada. If a captain can't take out a simple soldier, even if he is a fury, he'd have to resign, said Nagakura, assuming he wasn't dead. They fanned out quickly, surrounding the wounded soldier. There was no escape. The captains all attacked at once, and the fury died almost instantly. The excitement was over. Or so I'd thought. But it hadn't been only the captains who'd heard my cry for help. What's going on here? said Ito. Damn it! said Hijikata. Uh, what on earth happened to that man? Oh, this room has been stained with blood. How savage! His voice and his face were filled with shock and horror. Why have our captains cut down one of their own men? Explain this at once. What happened here? The captains fell silent. Uh, my apologies, said Sanan. Uh, my lack of discipline is at fault here. Sanan? His appearance surprised me and likely everyone else. It seemed like it would have been more prudent for him to remain hidden. Needless to say, the appearance of a man he'd thought dead did little to improve Ito's disposition. Sanan? What are you doing here? Ito's usual composure was almost entirely gone and he gaped openly at Sanan. I couldn't really blame him. I probably would have done much the same thing if I saw a dead man walking and talking. I will explain later, said Sanan, but first we must clean up this mess. Sanan's face looked tight and drained. As the commander of the Fury Corps, he likely felt responsible for what had happened, as the man who had gone mad was supposed to have been under his control. It's not your fault, Sanan, said Nagakura. It's just a side effect of the treatment, right? said Todo. Nothing you could do. Uh, what? Uh, what are you saying? said Ito. Treatment? Uh, what are they talking about, Sanan? I'm afraid I cannot divulge that information, said Sanan. Sanan's gaze slid to Ito for the moment, but he said nothing further. After all, what could he possibly say? How could one admit that they had been creating inhuman monsters in secret out of one's own soldiers? Ito's composure regained at last. He leveled a glare at Sanan. I was told that Sanan had passed away, and with no reason to doubt that information, I believe that was true. I see now that you have all conspired against me. I'm the deputy commander of the Shinsengumi. To do all of this without informing me, I dearly hope you have a satisfactory explanation. If all you're gonna do is bitch, why don't you do us all a favour and shut up? said Hichikata. A what? How dare you speak to me in such a manner? Hichikata, you! Calm down now, Ito, said Kondo. I'm sure Toshi didn't mean to snap. We're just all a little on edge right now, you have to understand. Oh, I understand all right. I understand that you are savages, each and every one of you. I cannot abide the company of such uncivilized cretins any longer. 
And as for you, Sanan, when you are finished here, I expect to hear why you are not, in fact, deceased, and why this was hidden from me. Ooh, said Sanan. Are you listening to me, Sanan? Um, uh, Sanan? Suddenly I realized he wasn't just being dismissive of Ito. There was something very wrong with him. His face was twisted in pain, and he didn't seem to respond at all, no matter how much I shouted his name. What's wrong, Sanan? said Nagakura. Uh, Sanan, who? Oh. Chizuro, get back, said Hijikata. What? His hair had begun to turn white. Ah! Oh. By the time I realized what was happening, it was too late. Sanan's hand shot out like an angry snake and closed around my wrist. Oh! The strength of his grip was unbelievable. His fingers might have been made of stone for all I could move them. I could almost feel the bones of my arm begin to bend under the strain. Oh, Sanan! Blood, this blood, said Sanan. His finger pressed against my arm too hard, wiping off some of the blood from the cut the soldier had given me. Please give me blood, your blood. No, let me go. Stop it, Sanan, said Harada. Damn it, the smell of blood's driving him crazy, said Nagakura. Let her go, Sanan, said Todo. Each man still had his hand on his sword, but I could see the hesitation in their eyes. It was Hijikata who finally spoke. Hold him down. We're gonna have to get a little rough. Damn it. Guess we don't have a choice, said Nagakura. Uh, sorry about this, Sanan, said Harada. I can't let you hurt Chizuru, said Todo. They moved into a circle around Sanan, their blades glinting. Are you going to kill Sanan, said Ito. I can't allow you to do that. Uh, Ito, it's dangerous here, said Kondo. Uh, we should just leave this to Toshi and the guys. Come on. Kondo? Uh, what are you? Unhand me! Kondo pulled a struggling Ito from the room and off down the hall. Good, said Harada. Now we've just got to take care of him. It's not going to be easy, said Nagakura. Sanan's always been pretty strong, and now he's... Well, you know, said Todo. Eh, blood, yes, my body, it needs the blood. His tongue flickered out to lick my blood from his fingers. All right, that's enough, said Todo. Come on, Shin, Sano, let's go. Uh, we all attack together, said Harada. Wait, said Hijikata. What? We don't have all night, Hijikata, said Nagakura. He's, he's doing something, said Hijikata. Grana. Sanan, what's going on? said Nagakura. Uh, what, what, what happened? said Sanan. The madness was gone from Sanan's eyes, and his hair was quickly fading back to its normal color. Sanan? Uh, Yukimura, uh, what am I doing here? 
Oh, thank goodness you're yourself again. I was relieved to see they hadn't been forced to cut Sanan down, but why had he returned to normal? What the hell just happened, said Harada. Your guess is as good as mine, said Nagakura. Hell if I know, said Hijikata. The captains weren't the only ones confused. Sanan himself seemed to be just as surprised at his sudden transformation. I see, said Sanan, so I went mad just like the others. And then, all of a sudden, you were normal again. I just can't understand how. How, said Sanan, I, I don't know. Uh, we can figure that out later, said Hichikata. First, we need to clean up this room. Someone get rid of that body. That floor mat's gonna have to go, said Harada. And we're gonna have to replace this door, said Nagakura. Each of them moved to begin some task that needed doing and Hijikata turned toward me. You? Yes, of course, I'll help too. You're hurt. What you need to do is rest. Uh, since you obviously can't use your room, you can stay in mine for tonight. Your room? Are you sure? Do I have a choice? Go. Yes. I had no desire to remain in the blood-soaked room any longer than I had to. It took me only minutes to reach Hijikata's room.